We, for, we built the, the Edelman Crawdad. There was a few of us kind of working on the pattern. Um, and we were testing at different places, like first in the bathtub, and uh, then we went to stream side. Um, then we started fishing it in still water. And we went through probably six prototypes um, over a year testing the crawdad. Um, and then we found one that worked pretty well and we stuck with it for about a year. And over that next year, we fine tuned it quite a bit because there was a couple things it wouldn't do. It wouldn't stand up the way I wanted it to. Um, crawdads, uh, when they go through the water and they're scared of something, they move quick backwards and then they stand up in a defensive posture and their, and their claws kind of go like this. And so that's, that's what we did with this eventually was we made it so that when you stop, when you strip it, the claws fold down tight. And when you stop, the thing stands up on its own. So down. Now I'm going to take a little bit of crystal flash. Uh, you can generally, I kind of color to match. If you've got, uh, if you're tying an olive crawdad, then I use uh, olive crystal flash. If I'm tying a rust crawdad, I go with orange or rust. Uh, depending on what time of year it is, depends on how much crystal flash I use. We're kind of rolling into the summer months, and so you got that nice high bright sun, and I really like that to catch to catch the attention of the fish. So I lay this in here pretty heavy, fold it over to the sides. I've got my legs, my crystal flash, my claws, my body. I'm going to fold this over, pull this. Kick in that tail and you know, all the way to the, the bottom. So what we would do is, if we found that when we cast and it hit the water, fish were swirling on it, we'd let it hit the water, do a couple of drifts, and then we'd just do real quick retrieves. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and let it swim down toward the bottom. Um, so you get a good grab either way. When you cast it, pull the thread tight together, securing the dubbing loop. Now I can spin the dummy loop a couple of times and then I can release the material and spin it a couple more times. At this point I'm going to wrap the dubbing loop around the hook shank <clears throat> wrapping toward the eye of the hook and then back on top of itself securing the material now I can tie the dubbing loop off with a couple wraps of thread 